Hello, and welcome to the Emmons for Mama podcast. I'm your host, Abby Halberstadt, hobby wife, mama to 10, Bible-believing Christian. And today is a very special day in our household. And I'll talk to you about why here in just a second. But first, I want to talk about our lovely podcast sponsor, Vogler Music Academy. They are a family-owned online music lesson program that allows your students to share lessons between five categories, ukulele, violin, um, mandolin, and guitar and piano. And they are so reasonably priced as well as fun and engaging. There's 30 years of shared experience. Um, I know the owners personally, they have musical backgrounds and they have such a heart for engaging your students and giving them the desire to learn and the intrinsic motivation. And um, so you can just check that fall item off your list of music lessons for your kids. You can use the code M is for mama 20 for 20% off each month that you're enrolled. And that brings your lessons down to as little as $30 a month, which is pretty amazing when we consider the usual price of music lessons. So check out Boatberg Music Academy and use the code ms for mama 20 I also want to talk about Christian Book. Christian Book is your one-stop shop for all things Christian books, gifts, and curricula for homeschoolers. If you are a homeschooling family, especially, you'll want to check out their amazing deals on brands like Apologia, BJU Press, Story of the World, Saxon, and so many more. And our family uses a little bit of all of these things. I love the smorgasbord approach. And I love that you can get great deals there as well as individualized care because they have dedicated homeschool advisors to answer all your curricula questions. So if you're needing good Christian literature, they have both of my books there, yay. Um, Or homeschool curricula, check out christianbooks.com. Okay, so today is a really fun and uh, exciting day at our house because it is September 24th and that means that it is the giant quad birthday. Um, If you're wondering what that means, I know that I've talked about this multiple times in books, on my social, um, and in my birth stories as well. But I've been getting so many questions on my social media today about the fact that all four of our twins, so two sets of twins, they all have the same birthday, um, which is nuts. I actually had someone message me the other day and say, that they had seen somewhere in the Guinness Book of World Records that there are only two other recorded examples of sets of twins born on the same day. So it's fairly unlikely that someone is going to have two sets of twins. I mean, it's somewhat unlikely that someone is going to have even one set of twins. It's fairly unlikely you're going to have two. Um, It's even more unlikely that both sets will be identical. Ours are both mono die, which means one placenta two amniotic sacs, um, and they are genetically identical, but you know, it's an egg that splits basically becomes two people. And then, um, then it's even, even more unlikely that they will share the same birthday. So if you want to listen to how that came about in detail, you can check out the twinsies and the twin bees birth stories, which is a really fun series that I did a while back with all of my kids' birth stories. So if you're a birth story junkie and haven't listened to those yet, check those out. Um, and we call them the twinsies because our first set of twins are identical girls, Evangeline and Magnolia. We call them Evie and Nola. And they just, they're turning 12 today. Um, and they uh, were born seven minutes apart, 12 years ago today um, at 1.01 and 1.08 a.m., I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and like I said, you can read the details of that uh, or listen to the details of that in um, in that podcast. But then the Lord came along and blessed us with Titus and Tobias, which are a set of identical boy twins. We call them the twin bees, twin brothers, twinsies, twin sisters to differentiate. So we don't just say the twins and they're like, which set? Um, and they came along eight years to the day later. And quite honestly, some of you guys were very instrumental in that because my pokey body was going to make it where I really think they were going to be born after midnight. Um, The way that I go, I just do not have babies quickly. And even dilated to a six, I can take another 12 hours. In fact, I think with my number six, Theo, uh, when my midwife came and I was like, okay, this is real labor. She came to my house and she checked me. She's like, you're at an eight. Okay. That's amazing. You know, this is going to go quickly. And I didn't have them for another 10 hours. So there was a very real possibility that Titus and Tobias were not going to be born on Evie and Nola's birthday, even though I was in labor all day on their birthday, which is nuts in and of itself. Um, but they, uh, when I, when I went online and 
gave people an update, people started praying and they were born like 50 minutes later, which is not 15, 50, but still very, very quick turnaround, super fast for me because I have very, very slow responses when I am contracting. Pokey, pokey uterus. Anyway, so it is um, such a fun day of celebration. Now I will say that this year is a little bit different because we, uh, seven of our kids attend a homeschool co-op, all of the school age kids that have not graduated yet. My eldest has graduated and the rest of the school age kids attend a co-op on Tuesdays. And so, and my high school kids especially need to be there for their classes and it's one day of instruction. So we try to make sure they don't miss. And we've had this nasty cough that I've been telling you guys about. So we have missed some. So we weren't going to keep everybody home for birthdays, even though it's a pretty momentous birthday when 40% of your kids all have the same birthday. Um, so we celebrated yesterday. So while today is a very cool day, we did most of our hoopla and all of our traditions. And if you want to know about birthday traditions, I actually have a birthday traditions podcast where I talk about some of our favorite things that we do for every kid and the, the why behind them and why our kids enjoy them so much. Um, and we actually asked Evie and Nola while we were out for lunch with them yesterday, which is one of our birthday traditions, what their favorites were. And they said, um, they just started kind of listing all of them, but they especially said that they loved the part where we go around our giant island and say one at a time, the thing that we love most about that person. Now it's always interesting on the quad birthday, because you have to say, okay, what I love about Evie is this, what I love about Nola is this, what I love about Titus is this, what I love about Toby is this. And so you're kind of out of breath by the time you get to the end of that. But they especially say that they appreciate hearing that and hearing how loved they are. Um, and they are indeed so loved, all four of them. Um, and I won't say, but especially Evie and Nola, but I think the the personality traits and just seeing them develop and get their own unique flair and seeing what their strengths are as they get older makes it easier to have very specific compliments, you know, because of course, most of the compliments for Titus and Toby were something like snuggly. They have great hugs. They have great smiles. They're fun to play with, you know, cause, cause you haven't seen quite yet the fruit of how their personalities are going to blossom into particular skills and all of those things. And I wanted to just acknowledge this fun day and say how grateful I am for it. But I also want to, um, I also want to just give you a word of encouragement that the Lord is so kind not to give us what we think that we want. I've talked about this many times before, and I'm sure there's some people that are like, you know, do your twins know that you think this, or you harp on this so much, you must not like having twins. I absolutely love having twins. But before I became a mother and when I was a new mom and only had singletons, one of my very specific prayers was that the Lord would give us babies one at a time. I didn't have a specific number in mind. I didn't have a cutoff. It wasn't like we were going to have five and then get a vasectomy or anything like that. And if, if you ever wonder about kind of our philosophy behind having quote unquote, so many kids, you can go back and listen to, I think it's episode two of this podcast where I talk about that in detail, but that wasn't, it wasn't the number of kids. It felt like the number of them at one time mattered to me very much though. And I was convinced that two at a time was too ha -ha, much and um, that it wouldn't be a positive experience. And so I would, you know, just told the Lord, that sounds hard. That sounds like all I would do. I mean, like, how would you even, how would you even make it through? How would you even have enough time for your other children? Like, how would you have time to eat or shower or do anything? All those things that we kind of talk about in motherhood that go by the wayside, like I haven't showered in four days because I literally didn't have time during the day and at night I'm too exhausted and I'd rather sleep. You know, I, that's obviously exacerbated when you have two infants instead of one. And the Lord just said, okay, thanks for your opinion. Um, but that's not what we're doing. We are giving you twins. And then um, I was so grateful that he did basically from the moment that I saw the sonogram where there were way too many arms and legs and heads and toes and everything. I was like, wow, that, that is a very full uterus in that sonogram. That was at 19 weeks with Evie and Nola. I got excited because I just, what was the other option? Moping and weeping and, and being, you know, worrying. No, obviously the Lord had planned this and he had put this path in order. Now, would I have chosen to immediately be pregnant with another set of twins after Evie and Nola? Probably not just for sheer, um, I just, 
having a, a break from a twin pregnancy, which is considerably harder than a singleton. Um, and yet that is what the Lord gave us in Theo who had been, we experienced vanishing twin syndrome with him. And I know you guys, many of you that listen regularly already know this. So I'm recapping some things for the, um, the, the loyal listeners and giving new information for some of you who haven't been here for very long. And we lost his twin at eight weeks. And I remember just that odd mixture of sadness that he would not get to experience what Evie and Nola, um, that bond that they had and a tiny bit of kind of like, Oh, wow. I didn't even know there were twins in there, but I, I'm not doing a twin pregnancy. There's a little bit of relief at not doing the pregnancy, but just like, but now we don't get to meet his twin till heaven. And, um, even yesterday as we were going around and talking about what a joy it was to have them and the unique ways that they bring, um, so much enjoyment to our life as, you know, as a family, I said to Theo, isn't it cool? Because they were saying they liked seeing them interact and be best friends. And I think Nola said about Evie, it's so nice to have a built-in best friend who's always kind and a shoulder to cry on and lean on. And I said, Theo, um, is it, how does it, you know, how does it make you feel to, to see this and to know that, that, you know, you could have had that. Um, and he, or, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't word it in a way that it would have made him wistful. It was just like, wouldn't it have been cool, Theo? And he was like, yeah, it would have been cool. But he has said before in the past that he feels like Honor is his best buddy. Honor is the next one down below him that's uh, right at two years younger and is almost like having a twin because they do everything together. So I think he he understands and has coped with it really well. Um, but our kids are able to see that unique bond and if not envy it, recognize it as something really cool. Um, so the Lord said no. Uh, sorry, you are going to have multiples. In fact, you're going to have be pregnant with multiples twice in a row. And then, um, the interesting thing is that there isn't any research that shows that your chances of having multiples again increases over another woman who has had, has, or hasn't had multiples that are, um, not identical in the case of identical twins. So it should just be that, if you have a set of identical twins, it's a quote unquote fluke. I don't believe in flukes. I believe in the Lord's sovereignty. And I believe that he very specifically gave us those babies for a purpose. And at least one of those purposes is to show us his goodness, even in the midst of our feeling a little overwhelmed at the beginning. Um, and, but also I know that his sovereignty is, is very real because I shouldn't have a higher chance of having another set of twins, much less being pregnant two more times with twins because identicals don't drive up that chance. Only fraternals do. And if you are a mom to fraternals, your chances of having twins again actually increase significantly, but they're not supposed to if you have identical twins. So, so funny that the Lord sometimes just looks at this desire of our heart that we're so sure is probably what should happen and says, not only am I saying no to that desire, I'm flipping it on its head and saying emphatically, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts and they're better. And I 100% agree with that now. So I mentioned um, that, you know, there are people that probably think that when I say I didn't want multiple specifically, well, it wasn't, I didn't want my specific children that I have. It was just the concept was intimidating to me. You know, how do your kids feel about that? Do they know that you didn't want to have twins? And the answer is yes. They have heard me say before that that was something that seemed like a lot, but my goodness, am I so grateful that the Lord didn't listen to a word that I said. He did not pay any attention to that desire of my heart and said instead, um, I'm going to give you exactly what you think you don't want so that you can learn how cool and what a blessing it actually is. So um, obviously we were, we were pretty shocked. Still, even with having been pregnant twice with two sets of twins, knowing that your chances don't aren't supposed to, quote unquote, supposed to increase to have another set when at 11 weeks, I think we came to get a sonogram just to see, you know, just to check and found out sure enough. In fact, the, the sonogram technician only saw one baby at first. And I remember thinking, that's odd. I feel like something's off here. I feel like this is not what's supposed to be, even though I hadn't really had any twin, I, I get asked constantly all the time, 
like people are like, what were your symptoms? Did you feel like you were going to have twins? Like what was the first clue? Um, and at the very, very beginning, I didn't have a lot of symptoms. So I don't think that I had anything that was definitively saying, Oh, this is like the other one. Other than I had one week of headaches both times with, um, Evianola and Titus and Toby. Um, when Evianola, they were pretty acute and Titus and Toby was just like a dull ache in the back of my head for a week. So apparently that's a twin symptom for me, but you can easily ignore that. You're like, oh, I haven't had enough sleep or I'm, you know, a little under the weather, whatever. So going in, the sonogram te technician saw one baby and I remember thinking, hmm, I'm, I, I feel a little weird about this. I feel a little surprised. And then she moved the wand and there was the other baby, um, which I just got a comment on my social media post today from my friend, Elizabeth Parsons, who has a wonderful account called Purely Parsons, where she talks about holistic remedies and, um, and her faith and, and Bible believing Christianity and they have a cool shop and they're actually going to be one of our podcast sponsors too. So I get to share with you some of their, um, some of their products, but she commented on my social media today and said, I so distinctly remember seeing your twin boys born and thinking, Oh my word, I cannot imagine having one set of twins. My goodness, that would be a lot much less two. And she just had another set of twins and we were already friends and had been for a while. And then I think it was about 10 or 11 days later that she texts me at like 3 AM and I'm up nursing two little babies and I have my phone and it dings and it just says help. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the only word I could go back and look, but I'm pretty sure it just says help. And I was like, what in the world? And I knew she was due because she was pregnant as well. And so I'm thinking, what happened? Like what happened with the baby? How am I going to help? I'm, I'm three and a half hours away from her or more, I think. And it was like a, you know, the little ellipses that goes across the screen where someone's writing or you're about to receive something. So I'm eagerly waiting while I feed these babies in the dark, um, 10 days postpartum. And all of a sudden a, a picture comes through of two babies. And so after seeing me have this set of twins, her being pregnant and thinking, good grief, that would, I can't even imagine that would be a lot. She had surprise twins. So has the first one at home in a birthing pool and thinks she's delivering the placenta and is like, wow, this is really intense. And out comes Gideon, her second twin. So crazy story. Still one of my favorite texts I've ever gotten. Help! And then a picture of two babies coming through. And I got to talk her off the ledge of absolute panic because if you haven't had nine months to prepare or with Evianola, we had... I think, um, 20 weeks, but still, if you haven't had that time to prepare your mind and your heart and your surroundings and your equipment and all of that, it can, I'm, I can only imagine how daunting that was. So just sharing with you from my heart today that, um, I've seen many, many other times in my life where the Lord has said, uh, sorry, but no, that's not how it's going to go. Sometimes things do go according to quote unquote your plan, but all that means is that your desires are already aligned with God's will because his will will prosper. Um, but there are other times when he just absolutely squashes what you think that you want. And sometimes the thing that you get, you can't see the immediate blessing in it. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I've talked about the fact that Titus and Toby were hard babies. Evie and Nola were hard toddlers. Um, hard, but not bad because hard is not the same thing as bad. But they were, they were challenging little girls and they really struggled for about a year and a half to find emotional equilibrium. I talk about that in my book card. It's not the same thing as bad. Now they are some of the most delightfully just generous hearted, precious girls I know. And I know they're my daughters, but just objectively, I get comments from people all the time about how kind and considerate of others and sweet spirited and sweet natured. And, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing that you just grin looking back at what challenging toddlers they were thinking like, are we ever going to get past these bad habits? Are we ever going to get past this phase? This is, is anything I'm doing having any effect whatsoever? And whether quote, anything I was doing was having any effect whatsoever. I was doing it out of obedience to God rather than simply looking for a result. And so to see the fruit beginning to blossom, so beautifully, man, that's just so cool. And Titus and Toby were really, really hard babies. And, and I'll be honest, they have not had a super easy phase since they were born. Now, I don't have children. 
because I'm looking for easy phases. I don't have children because I'm looking for something to go smoothly all the time. I have children because I believe they're a blessing from the Lord and because he has been kind to gift them to us. Um, and it's crazy to me that I now have my youngest children in the out of tiny baby and toddler phase. They're four years old today. And I would have never thought that um, I would go four years without having another child until my fertility was really waning, which, hey, it may be. Who knows? I am not a spring chicken anymore. Um, but I think that's another really, um, really sobering mindset shift that we need to have. I think especially when we're young and we're fertile and we're bucking, if, if we are bucking the cultural trend of kind of micromanaging fertility and taking birth control and all those things, it can be really daunting. I know it was for me to think like, okay, I love children and I want the children the Lord has for me. But what if that means I have 20 by the time I'm 42, you know, now I do have 10 by the time I'm 37. I was still 37 when I had Titus and Toby it was almost 38. Um, and that's a lot in a short amount of time, 10, 14 years. And a lot of people would think, oh, you know, that, that doesn't sound like a good idea to me. And I wouldn't have liked it and better you than me and all the things that you hear. And I'm really so, so grateful that the Lord chose to orchestrate our family the way that he did. However, I have assumed for the past four years that based on my track record, I was going to have another kid and I haven't. So when it comes to fertility, I hear from so many people that are worried about when they should stop, when they quote, know they're done. And then I hear on the opposite end, if I ever answer that and say like, we're not the ones in control anyway, the Lord's ways are higher than our ways. He is sovereign. I know people who are on birth control because they were determined not to have that fourth kid or fifth kid. And they got pregnant anyway. The Lord can work his purposes if, however he wants. Um, and then I'll have people in my DMs that come back and say basically what I'm saying to you, that sometimes his quote ways being higher than our ways means that you assume you're going to, you don't do anything about birth control or you have these plans to have four or five kids. And he says, I'm sorry, that's not the plan I have for you. I have um, barrenness for you right now, or I have one child for you or two and their heart is longing for more. And so I think that open-handedness that the Lord absolutely hammered me with, with twins is such a wise thing going forward in every area of our lives, but especially fertility, maybe not especially fertility, but, but it sort of seems like open handedness and kind of keeping our fingers pried open and relaxed and, and, um, in a posture of humility before the Lord is especially hard for people when it comes to fertility. And I include myself in that because even someone who says, this is something that I want the Lord to be in control of. I love kids. They are a blessing can sometimes feel like, oh, but I don't want to be pregnant again right now, or the timing isn't what I would want, or I think I only want one at a time. We have our preferences. And I don't think there's anything wrong with preferences. I'm not saying that we don't have desires and that we don't present those. In fact, the Bible says, with thanksgiving, present your petitions to the Lord. Um, but it also says that the God of peace will cover and engulf and, and just fill your heart with that peace, even when the circumstances don't match what our desires were. So I just want to encourage you just in a brief little podcast today that I'm so grateful I am where I am. And I'm so grateful for the lessons the Lord has taught me through lots of sleepless nights, really, really hard battles with toddlers, um, challenges even beyond that phase of having multiples that he saw fit to do things differently than I thought I wanted. Um, because if he hadn't, I, I, there's just, there's so much growth I wouldn't have. There's so much patience I wouldn't have learned. There's so much fun I wouldn't have experienced. Um, like I said, quad birthdays where you could celebrate all day and do all your traditions times four is just like fun amped. And then of course there are the times you assume something of course is going to happen or you want something to happen, not you don't want it to happen. And the Lord says, no, wait, or just that's not my plan for you. Um, so I'm in, I'm encouraging you today as we bask in the very unique glow of having four birthdays at once, which, hey, 
if, if you're gonna if you're gonna knock it out you might as well do 40 percent at once right um that the lord really does know what he's doing even when we don't even when we are over here pulling our hair out and saying i don't know how this is gonna work um and that he has good plans for your life that are for your benefit and for his glory If you enjoyed the MS for Mama podcast, I would be so honored if you would subscribe and follow along, maybe share with friends or even leave a review. And if you want more content on motherhood and biblical responses to cultural issues, be sure to follow along on Instagram at m.is.4.mama.